And I got it down to a science. I just wake up and apologize to the first one I say. <laughs> My name is Joey Callahan. I'm coming from Philadelphia. So, oh, from Phil if you're from Philly, I may need a ride home. Good, thank you. <laughs> Listen, this was my first time here. Do you guys realize how beautiful it is here? <laughs> if I want to see a mountain, I don't have, I would have to drive three hours to see a hill. You guys literally have mountains down the street. They're fantastic. You give them for directions, like go down Center Street, make a left at the mountain. <laughs> Don't make a right, because there's another mountain. <laughs> it's like the Olympics literally could happen around the corner. It's fantastic. <laughs> you guys probably don't even notice it. I love the Olympics. I love the Winter Olympics for one sport and one sport only, the ski jump. That to me, you know where they go off the ramp? I think that is an Olympic practical joke. <laughs> They get one dumb guy from every country and they go, hey, good day, God, come here. Go up those big flight of steps, go through the door, party for you. <laughs> okay. Oh! <laughs> My name is uh, Joey Callahan. And you may have heard that, but uh, <laughs> I got here and I was introduced to someone and they go, Callahan, that's really Irish. I go, yeah. And then I was thinking about it. My mother's maiden name was O'Connor and my grandmother's name was Gallagher. I'm literally related to the cast of Riverdance. <laughs> Callahan, O'Connor and Gallagher sounds like a law firm you don't want to hire. <laughs> People calling up, Callahan, O'Connor, Gallagher, and Goldberg. Yeah, can we talk to that fourth guy, please? We want to talk to the fourth. I'd like to hire the fourth guy, please. That'd be great. <laughs> Love doing comedy here. You guys are so nice. I, I, I always say this is an easy job. I think, personally, the toughest job in the world is being a waitress or a waiter. Yeah, because it's the only job where you literally have to stop doing your job to go sing happy to birthday to someone you don't care about. <laughs> no other job do you have to stop doing your job to sing happy birthday to a stranger. You never see a police officer pull somebody over <laughs> and go, license and registration, please. Oh, it's your birthday? <sighs> I'll be right back. I need back up. <laughs> It's his birthday. <laughs> Hold on, sir, this will just take a second. Happy birthday, happy birthday. <laughs> birthday to you. All right, one more, because you're good people. <laughs> ah, see that cat like reflexes, I'm like a ninja. Not a ninja, I'm a FOD. Any other FODs out here? My rap name would be Notorious FOD. Father of daughters. Anybody have daughters? I live with all women. I got it down to a science. I just wake up and apologize to the first one I say. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was I thinking? No, you're right, I don't listen. No, you're right, no, we should do it your way next time. I clearly don't know what I'm doing. You know, you're right, I will. <sighs> I have two daughters. I get a lot of this in my house. <laughs> my buddy has sons. I go, what's it like raising boys? He goes, it's easy. Just know how to hang drywall. I go, why? He goes, they're either gonna run into it or you're gonna shove them into it. Just know how to replace drywall. <laughs> My daughters are like the raptors in Jurassic Park. One gets your attention, the other one attacks from behind. <laughs> I do things to torture them. This past summer, I put my golf shirt on inside out. And we went to the mall. 
and I just waited. <laughs> All of a sudden, I get, Dad! Your shirt's inside out! It's the way the kids are wearing it. Just keep moving. <laughs> Got my older daughter, Emma Frances Callahan. She is a millennial. They're fun. She's 23, but when she was born, she was born with colic. She cried all the time. People go, oh, that was tough. When did it stop? I said, she's 23, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> I was arguing with her and she was indignant. She goes, you're too aggressive. I go, Emma, let me explain something to you. My father was an Irish Catholic teamster. Do you want to see aggressive? <laughs> You have no idea what aggressive is. <laughs> Growing up, my father would say things to me like, you know, you're not my real son. <laughs> my real son plays football for Notre Dame. I'm like, oh, what a coincidence. My real father could afford to send me there. <laughs> My dad would give me Alamo beatings. And Alamo beating was if I would just shut up, he'd stop beating me. But I was going out like the Alamo. <laughs> the odds were against me, my guns were a blaring. I don't know what I did one day. He chased me up down my room, I shut the door, I put my back against the door. He literally put his fist through the door and was reaching for me like a zombie movie. <laughs> my sister's on the other room going, Joey, just shut up. And of course I gotta go, who is he? <laughs> I'm not a sports guy. My dad lives and breathes sports. Just, I'm not a sports guy. And my dad tried to introduce me to sports when I was a kid growing up in the 70s. He bought me something called a Johnny Bench pitchback machine. Does any of the old guys remember what this was? You young guys, listen to what it was. It was a net that you threw a ball into and the ball would come back and you catch it. So whoever bought this for you was basically saying, look, we know you don't have any friends that will have a catch with you. <laughs> We'll buy you something that will. <laughs> My older daughter, Emma, did cheerleading for Pee Wee football. Oh, that was excruciating. You could tell all the fathers who had sons doing the Pee Wee football. And you could tell all the fathers who had daughters that had to be there. All the fathers were walking up and down the side like, suck it up, Timmy. Let's see some hustle, Bobby. What am I going to do? Good spin, Emma. <laughs> Nice twirl, Courtney. <laughs> Got my other daughter, Robin. I love Robin and I love Emma. Robin is very different from Emma. Robin works angles. Even when she was a little kid, I was potty training her. She would lie right to my face. She'd go into another room, I'd catch her mid poop. I go, Robin, are you pooping? She'd look at me straight face at two and go, no. <laughs> go get me a magazine, would you? <laughs> <laughs> she always is working an angle. She always wants to go out to eat at a restaurant. Sometimes I can't do it. Sometimes I'm running late. She's a little girl. We were running late. She wanted to go to a restaurant. And I happened to drive by a restaurant that had a sign, Kids Eat for Free. Robin goes, Dad, let's go there. Kids eat for free. I go, hey, Robin, when have you ever paid? <laughs> When have we ever been at a four-star French restaurant and you went, I got this one, Dad, your money's no good here. <laughs> Married to my lovely bride whose only flaws are taste in men. <laughs> this March will be married 29 years. <laughs> Before that, we dated for five years. That was in the 80s. That's when a guy showed a girl that he loved her by making a long distance phone call. <laughs> See, you young guys don't know what that's like. You just pick up your cell phone. It cost us blood, sweat, and tears to call out of state. It was expensive to make a long distance. She was in New York, I was in Philadelphia. We'd be on the phone going, I love you more. She'd like, no, I love you more. And then the phone company get on the line, no, we love you both more. <laughs> I'm married to a first grade teacher. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it's a cool job. And have you ever wondered what it'd be like to go to a mall with the most famous person you can imagine? <laughs> Walk around and people recognize that person? That's what it's like being married to a first grade teacher when you're in a mall and one of her students sees her. You can see it from the distance. I see a six-year-old kid going. <laughs> and it gets progressively, Mr. Cullen! Mr. Cullen! <laughs> and I gotta go with like the bouncer. No pictures, no pictures, put the phone down. I have to say, watching my wife give birth, you women are the superior gender. That little trick you can do with your body, God bless you. <laughs> As a man, I will never know what it's like to have anything leave my body that's eventually gonna go to college. <laughs> and my wife has a high tolerance for pain. I said earlier, we'll be married 29 years. <laughs> I'm not easy to be married to. When we were giving, when we, she was giving birth to my first daughter, I was in the room like, like an idiot. I didn't know what that was going on. There was a monitor that would tell when the contractions were coming. It was like, bloop, 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 bloop. And my wife didn't scream, didn't, she just made this face like, and it would pass. I went, wow, I'm impressed by her. But as time went on, she would tell me to do stuff and I would forget and she would make that same face. <laughs> Did you pick my mother up at the train station? No. <laughs> Never forget our first kid. She's pushing, pushing, all of a sudden this head pops out and she quits. She starts crying, I can't do this anymore. And the doctor starts yelling at me, say something, get her going. The only thing I can think to say is, honey, you better keep pushing or you're gonna have a hard time getting a pair of pants event. Going home tomorrow, gonna fly home tomorrow. Very excited to see my family. I've been on the road for a little bit. Driving, I did a, uh, a honeymoon resort where it was all couples. And I checked into my room, and in my room, in the center of my room, was a champagne glass shaped jacuzzi bathtub. Giant. Nothing says loser more than being by yourself in a room <laughs> with a giant jacuzzi shaped bathtub. I called my wife, she says, are you gonna go in it? I went, no, there is not enough Clorox in the world that can convince me. <laughs> I don't care if I have a hazmat suit from Chernobyl. <laughs> I am not going in that jacuzzi martini shaped bathtub, I'll tell you that right now. Do a lot of places uh, all over it. Sometimes it's really rural, right? I'm a city guy. But sometimes my gigs take me in a real, I went to one place where I was so far out there, I came upon a shopping center. It was a Cracker Barrel across from a Walmart next to a dollar store. It was like a white trash trifecta. <laughs> I was in upstate New York, there was a country store, I'm not making it up, the country store had a sign that said, guns, ammo, ice cream. Fun for the whole family. <laughs> We're gonna get some mint chocolate chip, some Rocky Road, and an AK-47 for grandma. <laughs> Everybody's happy. Been to Europe, I performed in Europe. I love performing in Europe except for one country. Can you guys guess the country? France. France. Very astute, young man, exactly. By no fault of my own. First time I was there, I was taking pictures by the Eiffel Tower. This French guy bumps into me, looks at me like it's my fault, and then walks away. Fortunately, being from Philadelphia, I got some training on how to handle this little problem. <laughs> I yell real loud, hey you with the attitude. The entire country of France turned around and looked at me. <laughs> and then they surrendered. <laughs> My 
My favorite country in Europe to perform is Scotland. <laughs> yeah. So why do you find that funny, sir? Okay, fair enough. I'm, we're on the same wavelength. I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, I agree with you. It's like Ireland without any relatives. <laughs> I had to perform. They're nuts with the soccer over there. I don't get the soccer. We as Americans, I mean, maybe he's kind of on the fringe, but in, in the world, they're nuts with the soccer. We're Americans. We have a World Series and nobody else is allowed to play in it. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that one, let it settle. <laughs> I had to perform for the premier fans of Glasgow Celtic versus Ranger. Have you guys ever seen a Scottish soccer fan? It's like watching the biggest NFL fan you've ever seen on steroids. I'm standing next to this guy, he's screaming, veins are pounding, he's like, run, let's see some defense, go back to Edinburgh, man. <laughs> this was just a guy standing in line to get a soda. <laughs> I actually met my wife in Europe, and when we got married, I went to take her back there for her honeymoon. I couldn't afford it, so I took her to Epcot. <laughs> I'm smooth, brother. I'm smooth. <laughs> what else can I tell you something about myself? I'm 53, and I say that only because I'm becoming an old guy, but I'm young enough to realize I'm becoming an old guy, but only after I say old guy stuff. Once it leaves my mouth, I realize I became an old guy. <laughs> Young comedian in New York City showed me his new iPhone and he's bragging about the camera. It just leaves my mouth. I go, what's your phone need a camera for? I'm like, ah. <laughs> Without missing a beat, he says he sends inappropriate pictures to his girlfriend. I'm like, oh my gosh, people do that? Then I'm thinking, thank God I did not have this technology growing up. <laughs> no one ever took an inappropriate picture with a Polaroid camera. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be great! <laughs> Give me a minute. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to mail it to you. Three, four days. <laughs> Speaking of old, my mother-in-law in New York still has a rotary phone. Do you guys remember the rotary phone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know, remember the last time you used the rotary phone, but it's actually faster to drive to the person's house and tell them what you want to tell them <laughs> than it is to call on a rotary phone. We were up over the holidays and all my in-laws were in the living room. I'm in the kitchen with the rotary phone goofing around. My wife comes in and goes, what are you doing? I go, I'm texting. <laughs> I'm at the point of my marriage where I can annoy my wife. I can get on her nerves even when I'm unconscious. <laughs> I've reached that zen level of being an annoying husband. I'm like a black belt of annoying husband. <laughs> Apparently, and I didn't know this, I snore. I only know that I snore because at 3 o'clock in the morning, my wife is screaming at me, I can't sleep like this! I'm like, neither can I, were you screaming? <laughs> I got that, that snore where you're, you're half asleep and half awake watching TV and you can't like... <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> I have two Labradors. I wish I could snore and sleep. Like, you ever see a dog sleep? Like... <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but they're winning. I'll tell you that right <laughs> I had to go uh, for a sleep test. Uh, I, 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 a sleep test where apparently I failed sleeping. <laughs> the technician comes in in the hospital, he puts all these wires all over my body. And he goes, go to sleep, and there's a camera. The next day he goes, uh, Mr. Callahan, you stopped breathing 125 times throughout the evening. <laughs> I go, let me ask you a question, Chief, when you're monitoring me with the cameras and the wire. Was there anybody standing next to my bed who looked like my wife holding a pill over my face? Because <laughs> I think that's the real reason I stop breathing when I'm sleeping. <laughs> I, have, uh, I have sleep apnea. 
Anybody have sleep apnea that's willing to admit it with me? Huh? Oh, wow, you're very excited. It's like a sleep apnea club. Fantastic. For those of you, particularly you young guys that don't know what I'm talking about. You stop breathing when you're sleeping because your, your, your breath thing, your throat thingy collapses, right? So you have to have a sleep apnea machine. It's a machine connected to a hose, connected to a mask that pushes air into your face. So you breathe. Girls, I want you to imagine this. Black socks, boxer briefs, mask over my face. <laughs> Who's bringing sexy back? <laughs> My wife says in the middle of the night, I open my mouth and all the air comes running out like. <laughs> better than the. <laughs> I said, here are your choices. <laughs> I'm a catch, ladies. <laughs> Also, a member of the truest minority on the planet. I face prejudice every day of my life. I'm left-handed. Yeah. Where are my other left-handed brothers and sisters? Let me feel the love. Watch this, boys and girls. Where are all the right-handed people? Clap and let me know where you are. Look at that. Always the majority. Everything in the world is made for you people. That's right. I said you people. Yeah, what was this country founded on? The Bill of Rights. <laughs> You're in school, you take a test, you don't get the answers right, what happens? You get left back. <laughs> Little things you take for granted are pure agony to us left-handed people. Have you ever seen a left-handed person work a can opener? <laughs> it is the most painful thing you will ever witness in your life. It's like, ah, ah. I'm not an animal, I'm left-handed! I'm 53 years old, I don't know what soup tastes like. <laughs> and my wife always gives me jobs around that house that end up in a trip to the emergency room you think she'd learn. So I'm leaving tomorrow. Uh, next, uh, next week I have to go down south. I have to go to Roanoke, Virginia. You ever been there? Yeah, I, I, with my accent, they don't like my accent down there. They get annoyed. I checked into my hotel one time and the guy heard my accent and he wanted to screw with the Yankee. He's like, uh, where are you from, boy? I go, Philadelphia. He goes, you better be careful, Yankee. This hotel's haunted. <laughs> I go, pal, I'm from Philly. I ain't afraid of a southern ghost. <laughs> I'm laying in bed all night long. All you hear is, boo. <laughs> NASCAR, boo! <laughs> my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law has the greatest accent in the world. He's from Mexico City. Man, I'd love to have his accent. Everything he says is so cool. I talk to him just to hear him talk. I'm like, hey man, where are you going? He's like, where am I going? <laughs> I'm going to the store! <laughs> And my niece sounds like a little girl. I wanted her to have her father's accent. I went to see a little girl walk in the room and go, I made the poopy. <laughs> hey folks, that's all my time. My name is Joey Kelly. <laughs>